I'm extremely honored to be here today with you. And yes, I'm from the South. <laughs> but I do want to share some of my journey, my fight for equal pay, for equal work. It's been more than 50 years ago that John F. Kennedy, when he was president, signed equal pay law so that we women could get equal pay for equal work. The next year, President Lyndon Johnson signed Title VII, which gave us more power and more ability to get what we're earning and what we're entitled to under the law. Didn't work that way. Never was enforced too well. Some companies did, some didn't. And we still are not paid equally. And if you believe that it's a myth, do the math. But I am here to talk about part of my journey. And I hear from women all over the country, actually sometimes from other parts of the world, about their unequal pay for equal work. They're furious, they're angry. Unequal pay hurts the women, it hurts their families, and it hurts us all. So equal pay is extremely important to the American families and any other family around the world. It's an economic stimulation when women are paid equitably because we know how to turn that money around, don't we ladies? <laughs> but I learned early in 1998 how much less the company I was working for was paying me. My journey actually started when I switched jobs in 1979 to go to work for Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company in Gadsden, Alabama. They started me out at the same rate that the men got, but very soon my pay dropped way out of line. But I had no way of knowing that because we were not allowed to discuss our pay. If we did, we wouldn't have a job. So no one ever did discuss their pay, and I learned by an anonymous note, early 1998, how much less I was making. I was devastated because that was my overtime pay. And also it was my retirement, my contributory retirement, my 401k, and today my social security also. And I will never get the money that I had legally earned. But the first thing I thought about how much my family had done without and how hard it had been when that was totally unnecessary. Because at that time when I switched to Goodyear, I had a daughter in college and my son had headed that way. We needed that money to pay college tuition and the mortgage and the other necessities of life as any other American family. But I couldn't let it go. So 1998, I filed a charge with the Equal Employment Commission even though I was two years away from retirement. 1999, I filed a lawsuit. 2003, my case was heard in the federal court in Alabama. A jury came back and awarded me $3.8 million. It was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that I had been unequally paid for equal work. My male peers were making so much more for doing the exact same job. But it, the case went all the way to the Supreme Court. And when the ruling, it was heard in, in the Supreme Court in Washington in 2006, we had to wait until the verdict came out in 2007. Five justices said I had waited too long. I definitely was discriminated against, but I had waited too long to file my charge. But that wasn't necessarily the way it was supposed to be. And Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg challenged Congress to take up the ball. She said, it's in your court and change this grave injustice back. And that's exactly what Congress did. So I went from the Supreme Court to walk in the halls of Congress in Washington, D.C. I testified twice before the House, twice before the Senate, and I made numerous calls on House members and then the Democrat and the Republicans in the Senate. And one thing I'm so very proud about, not only having the Ledbetter bill represent the people that's working today and it opened the courtroom doors back up, but it also was sponsored and co-sponsored by Republicans and Democrats and voted into law the same way. And then it was the first bill that President Obama signed in 2009. 
it was an honor for me to stand in that White, White House and see him sign that bill because every stroke of that pen meant that any woman in the future had an option if she learned she was being discriminated against for whatever reason. She could file a charge and maybe go to court to get her money because this is critical for the American families and you and I have to continue fighting for equal pay, for equal work. I get up each day with that on my mind because I need to make a difference, equal pay for equal work, because it's still detrimental to this country and our families, and it's from Hollywood to Wall Street to Walmart. Everybody is still in the category of unequal pay. It doesn't matter what position you hold, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or you're on TV or whatever, I find and meet people all around the world that's not getting equal pay. There are those exceptions, and we are making a lot of headway. And for that, I'm very grateful. Paycheck fairness, which should have been passed twice in the Senate, it has failed both times because we came up two votes short. And you do have a voice, and you do have a vote. So be sure to use that, and we'll make a difference for the future generations that they will have a better life for them and their families. I'm Lily Ledbetter, and I'm redefining power. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I didn't get any money. Some people think I did. Some people think I got 30,000. I didn't. But I'm telling you, that right there, each of you from your heart, that means more to me than money. I can't spend, spend it, but thank you, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you.